The EV community is rapidly growing, which means curious newcomers flood the internet with questions about their new purchase. Some of the most common questions I hear are centered around recovering and avoiding lost range and are usually followed up with underwhelming answers while almost always overlooking battery pack balancing. Suggestions like conservative charge limits often fall short of expectations. Today we'll learn that some lost range and pack capacity can almost always be recovered by following a simple yet seemingly unknown process. Welcome to Cosmological Nonsense, and in this video, we'll explore the science behind lithium battery packs and the importance of battery pack balancing. We'll demonstrate how to properly balance your Tesla's battery to ensure maximum range and pack longevity. We'll begin the journey by studying the charging characteristics of a battery pack in its simplest form, the single cell. Here we have a single lithium battery cell with an energy capacity of 20 watt hours. When the cell is full, the state of charge is 100%, shown by the small battery icon on the top of the screen. The state of charge is determined by constantly measuring the battery voltage. When the cell is drained, the voltage falls until the 0% state of charge voltage is reached, at which point all 20 watt hours have been extracted. Charging is achieved by driving current into the cell until the voltage corresponding to the 100% state of charge point is reached. Care must be taken to never exceed the upper and lower voltage limits of a single cell or irreversible damage will be done. When higher voltages and capacities are required, cells can be stacked end-to-end -end in a series configuration shown here. Keep in mind, charging and discharging this configuration happens through the entire series chain of cells, not on an individual cell basis. This example shows a pack containing five series cells yielding a capacity of 100 watt hours. The state of charge of the entire pack is determined to be zero whenever a single cell within the pack reaches its low voltage threshold. In this case, the cells are perfectly balanced, allowing all 100 watt hours to be extracted. Now let's do that again, but this time we'll start with an unbalanced pack. As you can see, the four outer cells are empty, but the middle cell still has two watt hours remaining. When the pack is charged, the middle cell will reach its upper limit first. This is the important bit. When it hits the top, no more energy can be put into this pack, or the middle cell would rise above its upper limit and risk damage. Therefore, the state of charge of the entire pack is said to be 100% at this point. One cell that was only slightly unbalanced prevented us from putting 8 watt hours into its neighboring cells, so when the pack is now drained, only 90 watt hours can be extracted. Now you see why keeping a pack balanced is so important. One cell that drifted away from the rest affects the entire pack's ability to store charge. This is why the battery management system, sometimes called the BMS, is so important. Once a sufficient state of charge is reached, the BMS can activate small bleed resistors across the highest cells, slowly draining just enough energy to bring them back into alignment, allowing the pack to be fully charged again. Once the pack is balanced and charged, the entire capacity of 100 watt hours can be extracted again. And keep in mind, your Tesla is not balancing individual cells as these simplified examples show. Instead, it uses parallel sets of cells called bricks that are then connected together in series to make up the pack. But the concepts are the same. The bricks must be kept balanced for the entire pack capacity to be extracted. All right, I wanna quickly try to explain why balancing will only take place at higher states of charge by showing you the voltage versus state of charge function that's inherent with all lithium cells. Look how flat the curve is in this mid-range. This makes it hard for the BMS to accurately distinguish between say 60% and 61% because these voltages are nearly identical. This means if you constantly keep your car at a low state of charge, you'll likely never trigger the balancing algorithm and your bricks may drift out of alignment. Instead, accurate balancing can only take place along this sharp knee where the voltages are rising rapidly as the state of charge approaches 100%. Up here, it's easy for the BMS to distinguish between 99 and 100%. Now, we don't know the exact state of charge that triggers the balancing bleed resistors. It may even change depending on your hardware and software revisions. But we do know that taking the pack up to 100% will absolutely trigger the BMS to balance the pack. This also means, since folks with iron phosphate packs constantly leave their rigs plugged in at 100%, their packs should always be balanced, and this process is much less critical for them. Okay, let's take a look at how the individual bricks might compare to each other in a typical Tesla's battery pack. Here we can see the state of charge of all the bricks within a Tesla's pack that's sitting at 80%. At this scale, the bricks appear nicely balanced. 
but if we stretch the scale and zoom in, we can see that there's misalignment between the individual bricks. Now, this pack is pretty well balanced. There's only about a half a percent difference between the highest and lowest brick, but this can still be improved with the help of the bleed resistors. To force the car to balance, let's first take the pack up to 100%. Once the pack hits 100%, we can be assured the bleed resistors have been activated. Next, since it's not good to leave your nickel pack sitting at 100%, will drive the car to bring the state of charge back down to 90%. Now if we zoom in again, we can see the bleed resistors working their magic. Over the next several hours, they'll slowly bring the pack into perfect balance. Each brick's bleed resistor will be activated for a predetermined amount of time to bleed off just enough energy to balance the pack. This means it doesn't matter if the car is parked or being driven during the long balancing process. If your pack was wildly unbalanced, range improvements won't show up until balancing is complete and you've gone through a few charge cycles which give your computer enough data to recalibrate. Now let's finally jump back into the car and get this balancing process started. Go ahead and set your charge limit to 100%. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this part of the video while we wait. Now this process can be done on all types of chargers, and feel free to experiment with using lower charge limits to activate the bleed resistors. However, it can be difficult to know if you've successfully started the balancing process, which is why I always use the 100% set point when I want to force the BMS to balance my pack. And look, I know some critics will say charging up to 100% is hard on the pack, but I've done it four times to this car to ensure the pack doesn't become unbalanced and with 12,000 miles on the odometer, I still have 352 miles of range. That's only down 6 miles from when the car was new. It's about 1.7%, which since the pack is balanced, can be fully attributed to normal chemical degradation. And to be clear, I'm not suggesting this process will recover all of your lost range, but I am suggesting that periodically charging up to 100% to balance your pack will keep your cells properly aligned and help minimize avoidable range loss. Okay, charging is complete. All that's left to do is unplug the charger, take your car for a cruise to bring that charge back down to 90% while the BMS balances your pack. 